Hey. <laughs> What's popping? What do you want, brain? I was just checking on you. Go away. But I made honey lavender chamomile effervescent hot tea. I don't care. Okay. And close the door. Alrighty, well, the late, innovative, and very relaxing TV art instructor Bob Ross once said that there's no such thing as mistakes, just happy accidents. Now, true, there is the occasional time in art where a random line or a stray brushstroke or paint splatter happens to add to your drawing or painting or what have you, and you just look at it and go, oh, I like that. That's, that's new. It's different. I didn't intend that. But for the other, you know, 99% of the time, we use these things because we have to, because we make mistakes. But I'm not here to talk about the hundreds of different kinds of different erasers there are, because I have by no means tried all of them, but I'm here to talk about the main three pros and cons and uh, let you decide for yourself what you think is best for what job. Let's get to it. Alrighty, so let's talk about the erasers. Mm -hmm. So there's basically three different types of erasers. We got an extra bonus one for you. Boop. So let's go with that. Alrighty, first off, we have the rubber eraser. This is your, you know, basic run of the mill, most versatile rubber eraser, and it works with most papers. It's pretty firm and precise, you know, sharp edges, of course, it can erase large areas very quickly, and it's pretty cheap too. It's like 25 cents, 50 cents, something like that. And uh, yeah, lasts a pretty good amount of time. It does, of course, leave these little crumbs, you know, as do most rubber erasers and it does tend to smear charcoal and chalk so not good for those but good for everything else graphite related overall pretty good eraser Beep. next under the rubber category is the gum eraser these are really soft and squishy and they are perfect for most paper types really especially the softer papers like watercolor or sketchbook paper it absorbs graphite really well and they're pretty cheap too. They're like 50 cents, maybe a dollar. However, they do leave tons of these crumbs because they're so soft. And because of that, they don't tend to last very long. So they're not really precise for details. They're excellent for covering large areas and just being gentle on your paper. It's uh, it's pretty good, solid B plus eraser right there. The kneaded eraser. This thing is great because it is a moldable eraser, picks up graphite and chalk very well, especially when you want to use something like finer details. You can always shape it, get those little tiny details like this, or get those wider details, especially. It can be cleaned and washed if you really wanted to wash your eraser. Downsides though, it's not really good for doing large areas of erasing, especially and you have to keep kneading it to get the graphite to go back inside. It is moderately priced, a couple bucks for this thing, but they do last forever. Great little eraser. Get one. Boop. Okay, last one, the vinyl eraser or plastic eraser. These things are super hard and resilient, which means they keep a sharp edge and are great for fine details. And because they're hard, they're excellent for your harder papers too, like illustration board, really getting in those little tiny bits of heavy hard graphite and they a lot of these can even lift and erase ink oh. and they even erase with a lot less crumbs too a lot less than the rubber ones do especially and because they are harder the downsides they can damage the softer papers and even tear them so i'd be careful with that they do smear chalk and charcoal pretty easily but overall great erasers they are a little bit more expensive they can go to like four or five dollars but overall Good eraser. I like it. But I know what you're here to see. You're here to see them all in action, getting it done. So let's do that and go to the eraser board. All right, here we are. This is our uh, erasing testing 
toolkit here. So we've got a lot of our most commonly used art supplies, even some less commonly used, but a lot of options that are most commonly erased. So we're going to give them all a shot and uh, try each one of these little erasers on each little part. I've got just a basic line going across it, just moderate pressure, and then a hard section for where I pressed for full opacity on each little section too, to see if we can erase everything. All right, let's give it a shot and see how it goes. Schmexy voice over time. Okie dokie. So I started with the plastic eraser, vinyl eraser, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, this one took care of the graphite really well. I mean, a little bit of smudging on the softer graphites and charcoals, but overall it still took out a good chunk of that. And I'm barely pressing at all, even with the colored pencil, which is always hard to erase. Same with the pastel. Uh, the wax crayon, a little bit of smudging there, a lot of smudging, but let's be realistic. How often do we use wax crayons? A uh, little bit with the ink and marker, not a ton there though. With the kneaded eraser, this thing is glorious. Took off really well with the softer stuff like the charcoal, the sanguine, and the softer graphite. A little bit of residue left, but notice how there's no, there's none. There's there's no crumbly things at all with this thing. It's it's amazing. It's the best. I uh, didn't take off the colored pencil or the pastel really well. Artist grand just not happening. And of course, same thing with the pens and marker. Doy. The gum eraser was great, took off the graphites and the chalks and charcoals really well. And again, I'm barely pressing on this thing and it's taken off a lot, even with the colored pencil. But just notice the insane amount of crumbly things that are coming off this thing. Even with the artist crayon, it took off a good bit. But again, this thing's not going to last very long. And of course, the rubber eraser, which was great. Just awesome overall eraser. This is the part where my camera died, so I just pretended to re-erase everything that you guys missed. So, but look at that. It took out most everything. Not a lot of smudging either. Did a pretty good job. Not too shabby. Hey, fun fact for you. Back before erasers, people just used bread. Here, give it a shot. But this is wheat bread. No, they used it as erasers. A little bonus for you. Let's see how this thing works. Mushy dip into a little ball. Mushy. And we'll try these. Ha! No way, look at that! <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. So let's see. Uh, let's see how far I can go. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Mm -hmm. Struggling a little bit on that one. Maybe this one? Nope. Yeah. Let's see if it can handle the heavy duty stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, it was worth a shot. But hey, look how good it took care of the graphite though. That's pretty impressive, not gonna lie. But anyway, it's so very good. And uh, yeah, I think that was fun. So there you have it. All your different little erasers and how they work and uh not too bad so there you go the different types of erasers and what they're good at and what they're not good at obviously there's many more that i've never even tried myself but uh hopefully that'll give you an idea about what kind of when erasers to use for what type of project i don't know uh yeah let me know what kind you like to use the most and uh why Maybe there's some that you feel like I should try that I've never even heard of before. That'd be interesting. Let me know. I'm going to go make a sandwich. Bye. Draw.